Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in the midst of the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008 in New York City, with Jeremy, a portfolio manager, and his colleagues Walt and Tom, given a task during a board meeting to increase company profits within three days, neglecting the best interests of clients. Jeremy, feeling the pressure, shouts at Walt, and all the employees in the office are seen working hard. Walt and colleagues convey the urgency of the task to the employees, prompting everyone to start working towards the goal. Meanwhile, Rosie kisses her husband, Jim Baxford, who is an armored car driver and former soldier. Rosie undergoes a MRA scan, and the results show a reduction in her near-fatal brain tumor, but the gland remains active. The doctor informs them about the situation and recommends hormone injections. Despite their plans for pregnancy, the doctor advises against it due to the high risks. Additionally, considering her condition, gene therapy is suggested as a viable option. The couple faces challenges as they navigate through medical decisions and their personal aspirations. Rosie and Jim, faced with financial constraints, navigate the challenges of her health condition. She starts attending appointments on her own due to monetary concerns. Jim, determined to support his wife, provides his card to a nurse and later visits with the medical reports. As it progresses, we discover Jim's financial struggles through a nighttime conversation with an insurance agent, revealing limitations on medical coverage. Rosie, overhearing their discussion, expresses her distress, prompting a heartfelt moment between the couple. Despite her concerns, he reassures her, affirming his commitment to managing their situation. The next day, he discusses insurance limitations with his armored car business colleague Sean. Sean Frank and Freddie engage in a conversation at a restaurant. Jim, dealing with the insurance agent, joins them, leading to discussions and a shared lunch. During the night, Jim, balancing the challenges of healthcare and financial worries, watches an interview with Johnson, while monitoring his own stocks. Rosie, working late, urges him to get some rest. The next day, he grapples with medical bills after her injections, creating additional strain on their finances. A brokerage man, Robert, visits him, expressing frustration as both of them have incurred losses. Tensions rise as Jeremy, facing concerns about falling prices, discusses credibility issues over the phone. Returning home, Jim learns from Rosie that she received a call from the bank. Attempting to reassure her, he advises her not to worry about it. However, once she leaves the room, he delves into the brokerage envelope she provided, and discovers a potentially serious issue. Concerned, he calls Robert, the individual who had been handling stock investments on his behalf. Unfortunately, he learns that there's a problem today, Robert is unable to invest in the agreed-upon 60 stocks. Tensions escalate as Robert even goes as far as threatening to sue Jim for the unexpected setback. Feeling the weight of the situation, Jim reaches out to his colleague Sean, urging him to cover for him. The mounting pressure and financial troubles leave Jim deeply upset, causing sleepless nights, as he grapples with the consequences of the investment dilemma. The next day, he finds himself at the lawyer's office, only to quickly retreat upon discovering the exorbitant fees demanded. Seeking solace, he heads to a local restaurant, where he rendezvous with his friends. Over a meal, Freddy, having weathered financial losses himself, strongly advises him to distance himself from his family, citing personal experiences with mutual fund pitfalls. As the evening progresses, Freddy and Tom bid their farewells, leaving Jim in the company of Sean. In a surprising turn of events, Sean offers Jim a sum of $10,000 to alleviate his financial woes. Despite the tempting offer, he stands firm, declining the generous gesture. Undeterred, he seeks counsel from Frank, who suggests a drastic measure, selling his house. Frank reveals that he too has liquidated his own residence in the stock market, yet he remains unable to provide a concrete solution to Jim's predicament. Facing a dead end, Jim's journey takes him to the hospital, where Rosie is undergoing treatment. In the midst of personal turmoil, he reflects on the gravity of his financial situation. The subsequent day arrives with a sense of resolution, as he decides to accept Sean's financial lifeline. He hands over the money to the lawyer, who, in a foreboding tone, warns him about the impending consequences of his actions, promising to make him pay for the tangled mess he finds himself in. Jim is left grappling with the repercussions of his choices, caught in a complex web of financial distress and personal challenges. Next, he attempts to meet Marwood, but Myra, Marwood's assistant, informs him that the meeting was not scheduled. Despite Marwood's eventual arrival, he avoids encountering Jim, prompting frustration, that culminates in Jim hurling an insult at Myra, before storming away in frustration. On the seashore, he encounters Sean, who reassures him about his financial concerns, advising him not to fret over money matters. 
Despite Sean's words of comfort, his troubled demeanor persists, haunting him even through the night. The next day, he receives a bank collection notice at a local shop. Overwhelmed and upset, he grapples with a relentless pressure, leading to sleepless nights for both him and Rosie. The strain on their relationship intensifies as Rosie, unaware of the full extent of their financial crisis, discovers a bank notice. Determined to shield her from further distress, he reassures her that he will handle the situation. She insists on taking charge and hands over the bank notice to him. He in turn contacts his lawyer. In a heartfelt exchange, he tries to absolve her of any responsibility for their troubles, emphasizing that her illness is not the cause. Despite his attempts at reassurance, he heads to the office, where Officer Andy delivers the grim news, Jim must now contribute a substantial portion of his salary to both the bank and a collection agency. In a devastating turn, he loses his job, as the company is not willing to trust him with large sums of money, and is handed $90,000 in cash instead of a check. Outside, Sean apologizes, but Rosie, burdened by the weight of their troubles, walks away without uttering a word. The couple, in an attempt to escape their tumultuous reality, embarks on a train journey. Tragically, Rosie succumbs to the overwhelming challenges, choosing to end her life within their home. In her final act, she leaves a poignant note adorned with a ring. Upon Jim's return, he is met with the chilling sight of her lifeless body. The police are summoned to investigate, and her remains are solemnly taken away. At Rosie's funeral, consumed by grief, he mourns her passing, shedding tears in solitude within the confines of the church long after the others have departed. In a once promising future now shrouded in tragedy, he confronts the harrowing aftermath of a life unraveling at the seams. In the midst of unrelenting sadness, he withdraws from the support of friends, ignoring calls from Sean and others who attempt to reach out. Days pass in isolation until, by chance, he stumbles upon Marwood reveling in a carefree moment at a party, exuberantly sipping wine and smoking a cigarette. Fueled by frustration, he confronts Marwood when he exits the gathering, questioning why his messages have gone unanswered. As Jim's life continues to unravel, he finds himself on the precipice of losing everything, with only his job hanging in the balance. In a moment of profound desperation, he contemplates an act of violence against Marwood, but ultimately recoils. Fate however intervenes when a sudden unforeseen accident involving a taxi leaves Marwood critically injured. Witnessing the aftermath, Jim flees the scene, grappling with the consequences of the tragic incident. Back at his house, haunted by the events unfolding around him, he watches the news. A report flashes across the screen, detailing Marwood's accident and sending shockwaves through Jim's already tumultuous existence. Meanwhile, Jeremy receives a call at the office, further deepening the mystery surrounding Jim's mental state. Haunted by a growing obsession, he begins compiling news articles and relevant information, pinning them to his wall, in an attempt to make sense of the chaos surrounding him. The once coherent narrative of his life unravels further, as he becomes increasingly absorbed in his quest for understanding. Amidst this turmoil, a voicemail from the bank arrives, signaling the impending closure of his mortgage and house repossession. When a bank agent arrives at his doorstep to finalize the grim process, Jim, fueled by a newfound defiance, refuses to sign the papers, and defiantly closes the door. In the aftermath, Jim directs his anguish towards Wall Street financiers, who he perceives as responsible for the devastation that has befallen his life. Consumed by a thirst for vengeance, he delves into the dark underworld, acquiring an arsenal of firearms and grenades from an illicit arms dealer. Embarking on a chilling one-man mission, he sets out to systematically eliminate the Wall Street bosses, who not only robbed him of his wealth, but also played a role in the untimely death of his wife. In a chilling revelation to his friends during a casual lunch, he brazenly confesses to being the elusive Wall Street murderer. To his disbelief, his friends dismiss his revelation as a macabre joke, convinced that such a notion is inconceivable. It reaches a climactic crescendo as he orchestrates a daring assault on a towering office building, determined to confront and exact revenge upon Jeremy Stancroft, a heartless and avaricious portfolio manager, indirectly responsible for Jim's financial downfall. Seated at Jeremy's desk, Jim lays bare the reasons behind his vendetta, exposing the corruption that led to his ruin, and questioning the morality of Jeremy's actions. The conversation takes a dark turn as Jeremy justifies his deeds, defending them with ruthless adherence to a survival of the fittest ideology. In a tense standoff, Jim reveals a poignant photograph of his late wife, laying the blame squarely on Jeremy for her tragic demise. As the SWAT team closes in, Jim places an empty gun on the table, challenging Jeremy to a deadly game of chance. The tension escalates until, at the crucial moment, Jeremy pulls the trigger, only to discover the gun is empty. SWAT intervenes, terminating Jeremy's life, 
and providing Jim with an opportunity to escape, under the guise of an innocent victim wounded during the confrontation. Moments later, he stands in the lobby, surrounded by the chaotic aftermath. Treated for a gunshot wound to his arm, he is recognized by his NYPD lunchmates called to the scene, who lead him to the street without uttering a word. Jim walks away, vowing to continue his crusade against white-collar businessmen, leaving an unsettling question lingering in the air, about the blurred lines between justice and vengeance. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.